This model is used to demonstrate the technique of opening and closing a laparotomy incision. Using the belly of the knife, incise the skin. These porcine models do not contain a linear alba as we would encounter in humans if performing a midline laparotomy. As such, the incision should be deepened through the muscles of the porcine abdominal wall. We have placed a sheet of polythene in between the porcine abdominal wall and the red balloon to mimic the peritoneum. When opening the peritoneum, place a clip on a fold and another clip a short distance from it. Ensure that you have only grasped peritoneum and have not picked up any other intraperitoneal organs. Incise the peritoneum using either a knife, as shown here, or with some dissecting scissors. Once you are certain that you are in the peritoneal cavity, extend the incision using scissors in the line of the skin incision. Closing the laparotomy incision relies on a knowledge of Jenkins rule which states that the length of suture material should be four times that of the length of the incision or put another way you should take bites which are one centimeter deep and one centimeter from each wound edge. Use a looped suture such as a looped PDS as we have used here. Your first bite should be from superficial to deep beyond the apex and the second bite from deep to superficial, finishing beyond the apex. Lock the suture by passing the needle through the loop and pulling down. The mass closure technique which we employ here relies on taking bites of all the muscle layers. In vivo, the peritoneum may also be included, but because the polythene in this model is inclined to rip, we have not included it here. Insert a continuous suture, stopping just at the middle of the incision. Starting at the other end of the wound, use another looped suture, negotiating the apex in the same manner as before. Again, insert a continuous suture heading towards the middle of the incision. Insert a finger to ensure that no bowel has been caught up in the suture line. This also ensures there are no gaps at either end of the wound which could lead to incisional hernias.
To complete the mass closure, continue beyond the midpoint. Here we have used the handle of a pair of forceps to protect the underlying bow while the needle is inserted. It is important that the knot is tied across the midline. In other words, the suture starting from the left of the wound and the suture starting from the right of the wound should be on opposite sides of the midline. This may mean you need to reverse your suture, as we are doing here. Do not strangulate the tissues, but ensure that the sutures are pulled tight. Tie a secure reef knot using at least seven throws, as this is a monofilament suture. Cut one end of the suture. You are now in a position to bury the knot as shown. Take extra care when burying the knot, not to catch any bow. The mass closure is now complete and the skin can be closed using an appropriate method.